So here we go, the best against the best. It's what the International Champions Cup is all about. Ever since its inception, it has brought together the most famous club sides in world football and given us matches with edge and meaning aplenty. The clubs love what it does for them. The fans from North America to Southeast Asia just cannot get enough of it. And the players have truly embraced the concept and the competitive nature of the fixtures, giving them an edge on the rest when the league campaigns do kick in. And there is always an edge when these two meet. For Atletico, an opener against Guadalajara in Arlington, Texas. They'll be staying on in the States to meet an MLS All-Star select in Orlando, Florida, and still one more game in the ICC against Juventus on August the 10th, a fixture just about as enticing as this one. But nothing quite to enthuse the public like Real Madrid and Atletico. And here come Real. A win and a defeat so far. And I think the uh, emblazoned T-shirts tell the story of uh, an up-and-down pre-season so far. Marco Asensio, as you may be aware, set for a very long spell on the sidelines and uh, a little message of goodwill from all his teammates there. That's a good touch. And not the only injury concern, as you will shortly find out. So much to look forward to here this evening. But, of course, it is my duty once more to report on a player not likely to be a part of the story going forward. The latest on Gareth Bale is that there is news this evening, widespread reports, suggesting that Bale is definitely on his way to China. Mind you, I seem to remember saying something quite similar the other night. And, in fact, he was pretty much the star turn on the field, coming on against Arsenal, scoring and making a goal-line clearance. But Zidane apparently unmoved. Real planning without him. Thunderous reception, 80 odd thousand here. And as ever, on this uh, 2019 renewal of the International Champions Kit, the uh, chance for one of the local superstars in other codes to get involved. Coque <laughs> captains Atletico, Sergio Ramos once more for Real Madrid. Apparently uh, relations restored once more in what has always been a slightly rocky relationship between Ramos and some of the other big personalities, both in the dressing room and upstairs at Real Madrid. Anyway, let's hope for uh, a straightforward job at the toss. So the preliminaries almost dispensed with the team news as follows. For Real, no Casemiro following Copa America duty, and now no Ferlan Mendy, Brian Diaz, and most significantly, Marco Asensio, who may struggle to play any part in the campaign ahead following the knee injury sustained against Arsenal. Thibaut Courtois in goal this evening, Odrio Sola comes in at right back for Dani Carvajal. Isco picked ahead of Lucas Vazquez, and Luka Jovic, sacrificed after the early sending off of Nacho against Arsenal, gets a second chance to make a first impression. And in case it becomes relevant, I will say that Gareth Bale has been named among the substitutes once more. And so to Simeone's selection for Atletico, the year of Juan Fran Godin and Felipe Luis, defensive linchpins and leviathans, now over it appears. Kieran Trippier, Hermoso and Renan Lodi are asked to keep the tradition going in a new look back for Jao Felix, signed from Benfica for 126 million, is required to take on the mantle of Antoine Griezmann. 
and he also starts here. But Marcos Llorente signed from Real Madrid for 40 million, sent off after 24 minutes of his debut against Guadalajara. He's only among the substitutes. So a relatively balmy 79 degrees. And certainly acceptable levels of humidity. I know there's a huge uh, heat wave going on back home, but this should not inconvenience these players. Superstars on both sides. The first ever Madrid derby played outside of the Spanish capital. And who better in the whole world of football than Jerry Armstrong to watch it with us? Welcome, Jerry. Thanks very much, Paul. Looking forward to this. It's a bit of history in the making. Obviously, these two clubs have never competed outside of Spain. I'll throw you a few facts in as well. Obviously, you've got, you know, there, there's a lot of animosity between the two clubs. And, uh, of course, Atletico Madrid finished second in the league last season and Real Madrid were third. But uh, you'll see a lot of competitiveness. And that's the start of it now. Right away, it was Lamar making his mark. It was shifted right to Diego Costa. And Atletico have scored within 43 seconds here. Talk about being caught cold in the heat. Real Madrid nowhere, and Atletico lead 1-0. Well, that's it. They lost a challenge on the halfway line now. You talk about Diego Simeone. His teams are so fired up, and we've been chatting about it before the game kicked off. They're fired up. They want to win this game. The animosity, the hatred between the two clubs. You'll see that later on, and I'm going to mention, obviously, Sergio Ramos, who's been sent off 19 times in the Liga, 24 times in total. That looks like it takes a deflection. I think the shot from Costa was deflected by Sergio Ramos. Let's have a look, see. Jerry, yeah. would, I wonder whether Morata was also very clever. Would he have been given offside if he touched it? I don't know. Well, let's see again. I think the keeper had it covered. It was going to hit the near post, and it was deflected into the far post. There, off the right foot, ankle of Sergio Ramos, and had Morata touched it, I think it would have been disallowed. And he was clever enough to let it run. And I'm not sure these two guys would get together and be a good formation, the two centre-forwards, because they're similar. But that's the early goal and the first blood for Atletico Madrid. And the crowd are going absolutely crazy here in the International Champions Cup. It was... Uh rapturous reception before kickoff and it's gone up a level or two with that amazing start from Atletico. That's a dream start, that's what Simeone would love because his players work so hard. You'll see the pressing straight away, they'll close down. I'm looking as well, Paul, I talked to you about the front line for Real Madrid. You know, you, you, Eden Hazard, who's playing, and you've got Vinicius, who's playing, both wide players, not prolific goal scorers. Eden Hazard's probably got more goals than Vinicius will ever get. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure they've got enough firepower on at this moment in time, but it's a disastrous start at the moment. A fairly rocky pre-season so far, one way and another. Here's young Otorio Sola. Jerry's had his eye on him, and he's in tonight, giving a big chance here, isn't he, at right back? He is, and uh, the boy can really get forward. He's got a fabulous engine, gets to the byline there. You can see he'll run all day long. Hasn't played much in the tournament, and... Uh, Carvajal has probably got first claim there, but he's looking to put his claim in. Tony Cross with the corner. The man nice and sharp again, a little help on its way by João Felix. And very nicely worked to Morata, who's also moving well here early on. Diego Costa was wow. creeping in behind Marcelo. They're looking razor sharp here, Atletico. Well, Morata does bring it, the ex-Real Madrid player, who I think should never have been sold. That's a free kick. But the press is strong and purposeful all around the field from Atletico. And Edin Hazard, well, here we go again with Hazard. We know what an absolute superstar he is, Jerry. but it would help if at some point during this International Champions Cup, Hazard put down a real marker and he's not done it yet has he? Not so far and uh, listening to the interviews from Zinedine Zidane Paul, um, not just today but over the last few weeks you know he's he's trying to find out what his best team is and I know Marco Asensio would have been in his side but he has to rejig everything because of that he won't have Marco Asensio till March or April next year so they have to find the best formation 
and Luka Jovic has got to find heart. He's going to get opportunities in centre goal. We haven't seen anything of him. He's been really unfortunate. And look at this, over the top, he's onside. It's another race for Ramos to get back onside. Such a poor touch by Costa. Courtois, well, he's presented with it in the end. Morata and Costa are running riot at the moment. It was Morata, actually, who was in that time. Well, uh, Na Nacho playing at centre-half, Paul, alongside Sergio Ramos. He gets sent off in the game, and he hasn't had a particularly good tournament so far for me. Vinicius Junior has won Real Madrid another corner, but they might well be two down already, Jerry. Should have been one and one. You're right, Paul. The second touch, his first touch when he went clear was good, but his second touch en enabled the goalkeeper to come out and take the ball off his feet. It's poor second touch. Should have been two nil up. Taken short this time to the back post by Modric. It wasn't a bad one. Nacho is in there. Marcelo. Tentative little prod at the ball by Vinicius Junior. I think he was trying to control it, but might have been better just trying to guide it towards goal. It had a bit of pace on it from the cross from Marcelo. That's a poor start to the, this game once again for Real Madrid and Zinedine Zidane. Poor start wasn't against Arsenal. I thought they were yes, very it was, poor. You're quite first, right. You know, and Nacho getting sent off. They were all over the place, but. He needs to find a little bit of rhythm, and he knows that. He needs to find his best team. He doesn't know that yet. Morata must fancy this tonight, Jerry. Morata will run them all day long. He's a good athlete, good target man, actual Madrid player. He'll want to prove a point, and he'll want to prove a point for this man as well. He only got six goals last season in the 15, 16 games he played for Atletico Madrid on loan. But uh, he can improve on that. I think he's got a lot of ability, but he's not playing well at the moment. He's a wee bit short of confidence for me. Vinicius Junior, one who hopes will profit from the departure of Bale, and it's beautifully worked to Othri Azola. There were times last season when one suspected that Zinedine Zidane really wanted to get Vinicius Junior in the side ahead of Bale. Yes. Is that fair? Yes, but Vinicius, it took a little bit of time for him to come through at his age. Look at his cutback from Othri Azola, looking for Vinicius Junior. And he's a player who loves to get forward. Honestly, Odri Azola is not really a right back, he's a wing back. He gets, runs all day, box to box. So, a very testing opening once more here for Real Madrid. Now, remember, they lost and lost fairly comprehensively to Bayern Munich, and as Jerry rightly said, they were very, very slow to start against Arsenal. And even before that, Jerry, I think back to the latter part of last season, the second coming of Zizou. Yep to uh, Real Madrid, and it did not go very well. Those defeats mounted up, didn't they, late in the campaign? Valencia, Raya Vallecano, yep. Real Sociedad. They even lost at home to Real Betis at the very end of the season. So a win would be very, very important for them, I think. Yeah, they're a bit short of confidence again, and uh, it's scoring, scoring goals now. Look at this. Saul has got it. And it's two, and João Felix weighs in with a goal for his new club. A fabulous start to his Atletico Madrid career. There's one thing to score in that famous jersey, but to do it against the famous all-white makes it all right indeed. Well, that's a dream start for Xao Felix. He's come into the box. He had a great season last year, particularly the second half uh, for Benfica. And Sal gets to the byline, too easy for me, cuts it back. Oh, there's three or four white shirts. They're not picking anybody up. And it's awful defending, it really is. And where's Andre Thola? He might get forward, but he hasn't got back. And it's a tap end for João Felix and a, a great open debut goal in the derby for him. Oh, too easy, Paul, far too easy. Atletico Madrid, true to type, seem to have been working very, very hard while they've been here since the nil-nil against Guadalajara to open the International Champions Cup campaign. And the hard yards they've been putting in under Simeone in preparation for this game are paying off because they look, what, yards quicker. They look a better organised team. They're working. They have a, a shape to them. They haven't had as many changes. I, I know they've lost Griezmann, who's a big loss, but, you know, they've got two goal scorers there, two target men. I'm not being funny. Diego Costa should have scored two minutes ago. It should have been 3-0. And they have had a horrendous start. 
2-0 down against Arsenal they were they missed chance after chance against Bayern Munich in the opening half and uh, they end up losing 3-1 and I thought deservedly so but uh, they need to find the shape they need to find a pattern they need to slot this man into position along with all the others there's so many faces they're trying to find out about and there's players who are not even here at the moment who are unavailable Casemiro's one of them laid off by Jovic but Jovic not really doing much in where he can do his best work which is in that penalty box Oh, Paul on the counter-attack, they're going to rip them to pieces. Morata again finding Jao Felix, Jao Felix again! Courtois in goal, throws his arms wide and says, I need a bit of help here, guys. They couldn't so easily be three down. Four against two, the other two are coming back, they're out of the game. It's the two full-backs, Marcelo and Audra Thola. It's the two centre-halves left, four on two. He should have scored or he should have played somebody else in. It should be 4-0. Modric trying to pick it up for Real Madrid. Odrio Thorla had the chance to get his head up and look for a target, and that's as easy as it could be for Trippier. Nicely taken by Morata. This is one of the great unknowns, of course, for 2019-20, isn't it? Morata, if they can get a tune out of him, Jerry. Here's Lamar, who's looked very, very good so far, and he's worked it well. Ramos got his head on it. Some composure is required from Real Madrid's point of view. Vinicius gives it to Eden Hazard. Hazard down the middle. Eventually got clear of Saul's challenge. Vinicius Junior. Jovic is well picked up at the moment and there was nothing, nothing to cross it to. I don't know what the shape is. I don't know how they're going to play here. It looks like a three there with obviously Vinicius on the right, Hazard on the left. Isco, I haven't seen, he's closing down now, he's playing in the... Well, he's supposed to be a midfield role, but he, he, he's usually a number 10 who plays in the hole behind the front, one or two. But uh, the shape doesn't look right to me, and it didn't look right at the start. Nacho does well to recover on that occasion. Morata, fingers, he's given the hand some applause, sir, because it was a good ball and he didn't anticipate it well. Real Madrid will do well to recover again here, though, as they did against Arsenal. This looks an altogether stiffer test here. Well, they won't capitulate too easy. This well-organised machine that Simeone has put together. And they know the Real Madrid players inside out. I just think the shape of the Atletico Madrid team and players is much, much better than Real Madrid. They are all over the place at the moment, Paul, to be honest. Well, there's something wrong with Morata. He's not injured, is he? I think they're not going he to is. take a chance. He's going to be withdrawn. That's sad for him, and uh, obviously a concern going forward. Real Madrid know all about that during this spell in the United States. They've <laughs> had several injuries of their own, of course. If they think they had problems with Morata, Correa is a flying machine. Um, somebody they really believe in. <laughs> Angel Correa is a goal scorer, he's a flying machine. And, you know, that's maybe a better partnership now because you've a target man and Diego Costa and you've a little quick guy who'll play off him and he'll run them ragged as well. Well, the history of this club, I mean, 33 league titles for uh, Real Madrid which is the record. Uh, Barcelona, the closest rivals on 26. But they're not, they're not looking a good side at this present time, Paul. Modric. Modric Thola. Been one of the more progressive players so far in a, a very torrid first quarter hour here. Oh, it's a fair pass. Looking for Marcelo on the left-hand side. Haven't seen much of Isco. Well, haven't seen too much of too many of the Real Madrid players. And his side have definitely settled down better than anybody else. They have really ripped into Real Madrid in the opening minutes. Got an early goal. Well, they got a second goal. Could have been two, three, four nil up. 
Not a lot for Kieran Trippier to worry about so far. He thinks he's come to the world beaters here. Yeah. They really have started so well. 25 million from Tottenham. And here's the young left back Renan Lodi, who is also looking a player in the great tradition, Lamar. Deflection on it, Courtois got down well. It was Diego Costa who had the hit. Costa seems to be enjoying himself again, Jerry, and that could be bad news for everybody back home in Spain. Well, he needs a good season, and uh, that'll give him confidence. There's no doubt about that when you play against your old arch rivals and you score goals and you get chances. And Isco's got to find his form. He's got to get more of the ball. They've got to start creating. That's cheaply given away by Luka Modric. now at this stage Jerry not only a veteran beyond his years but a link from another era the first Simeone team yeah he's class he is a class this Lottie looks really good on the left hand side has got forward supported well you know the, the new look back four for Athletic Madrid has good shape about it Trippier will get forward at every opportunity I know all about Savage and uh, oh, the, the centre half now you're going to love watching him play because Hermoso has had a great season last year for Espanyol and Spain and he's coming to a big club now but what about the understanding oh. between these two boys down the left this is a, a very promising development even this early for Atletico with just looking like a natural understanding between Lamar and Lodi coming in behind him. Well, is there any contact here? He goes down too easy, and that's not looked upon too well. Lodi, there's contact, very little, and he's looking, he's diving, and he's looking for the free kick, and the referee's not going to give him it. Not like that, Paul. I don't like to see people trying to milk a situation. Diego Godin was a, an absolute master of centre-half in the Uruguayan, and he's gone to China. Oh, and what's happened here with Lodi? Has he gone down? Was there a contact, or is he just one of those players that if you touch him, he falls? He's holding his ribs. Maybe he injured himself when he went flying through the air in the box. <laughs> It could be. Let's have a look, see. And he's waving and he's going down. Nobody's touched him. I think he could be right, Paul. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Whatever way he dived, he's landed awkwardly on his ribs on the left hand side. Well, that'll teach him, Jerry, won't yeah. it? Yeah. You have to be careful with those uh, intercostal muscles. I think this is the goal. Costa. The reflection of Ramos and Morata put the brakes on just in time. Well, this is the, the cutback from Sal. He was first in the ball. He wanted it more, but the Real Madrid defence is awful. Very, very poor defending. Big shell shock and hit that young man. He must be in cloud nine at the moment. João Luis, he's just he's just thinking, I've scored my first goal, a huge 120 million euro transfer. Uh, they're all looking good for that man, S Simeone, he must be really happy. And they're very happy to have him once more for 2019-20. Much speculation, of course, that finally he might move on, but loyalty to Atletico Madrid rewarded with, uh, we understand, another bumper contract. Top-class manager, if they finish above Real Madrid, he's had to do something good and had a good run in the Champions League. But... Uh, he needs to improve on that every year. He, well, he drives himself on. He's such a hard pass, Marcel. That's a good ball. Here's Trippier. Deluded Marcelo. Ramos kept his arms by his side. It's nicely done by Coque. Brilliantly done. Oh, and it's three. Oh, it's fantastic. They can't stop themselves from scoring. Correa's in this time. Oh, what a goal. Coque so very, very clever, and Courtois beaten again. 
Well, I did say to you, when this young boy comes on, Argel Correa, he is a flying machine. He's got great technique. He knows where the back of the net is. And I think that's a good partnership. It really is. But the ball from Sal was a good ball. You're right. I think Real Madrid are still in second gear. Their first everything. Trippier wins this. The ball forward. Clever. Links it through. He's onside. He takes a touch. He knows where the back of the net is. And instinctively pivots there and bang back in the net no chance for Courtois 3-0 this is a right it really is wonderful skills but Jerry what are Real Madrid doing back there everybody rushes to the ball it's panic stations in front of Courtois they're, they're not playing Real Madrid haven't played yet they haven't started their season has been so slow starting it's untrue and they had that good wishes for and it's like be strong to Marco Asensio they need to be strong themselves now on the pitch really they have to pick themselves up because losing 3-0 after 20 minutes in the first derby outside of Spain is crazy and that won't go down well for confidence no indeed one of the great club rivalries anywhere in the world but this is a one-sided renewal at the moment I was going to say to you at the start of the game, maybe it might go to penalties, you know. <laughs> I think I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> Very one-sided at this moment in time. In recent years, Gary, as you know so much better than I, I think it's fair to say most of the games have been very tight one way or the other. Well, certainly have. In Spain, they have. I don't know what's happened. I don't think Real Madrid travelled too well. And they haven't played well in any of the first half of all three games they played in. And 2 0 down against Arsenal and losing 1 0 to Bayern Munich. I do feel that, I don't know if they're not training properly or what they're doing wrong, but they have to pick themselves up because they are not playing like the Real Madrid that we expect. As I again is playing down the middle at the moment, there's no discernible pattern. This go, Marcelo out on the left side, and I actually did ask you that when we watched them against Arsenal, if yeah. you could actually tell, help us, Jerry, by pointing out what it is you think Zidane is trying to put in place as a kind of a system for this season. Honestly, don't know. I'm, I'm, but I looked at the team and I saw five midfield players and one striker up front, and uh, I thought, how is he going to play? How is he going to make this team work for him? Because he's got Jovic up front, and I thought, who's going to get him service? Where's it going to come from? Where's Isco going to play? I thought, Zid and yeah, I've, I can see him playing on the left-hand side with Hazard and on the right-hand side with Vinicius. But other than that, it doesn't do anything for me. I thought, this is a really competitive, well-organised uh, Atletico Madrid side. And they just look so much stronger. And remember, they're not at full strength themselves, Atletico. Jimenez not involved at the moment following the Copa America. Wow, he wasn't offside, Paul, by the way, it was just a, a little bit heavy on the pass. And they can go past this Real Madrid midfield and back four at will. That's another awful ball. Tony Kroos is renowned for his passing, that was a horrible pass, well behind uh, Marcelo. Legions of Real Madrid supporters here, coming out on the uh, public transport from New York City and all over the eastern seaboard of the United States for this special occasion, and they're very, very troubled at the moment. <laughs> they certainly are. Well, it doesn't bode well for the season if they're playing like this. And we need to see changes, we need to see changes in attitude with the players. There's a lot of experienced players on there. You know, Luka Modric is World Cup final player, and, and I don't see it, and Sergio Ramos has won the World Cup. Here's Luka Modric. Vinicius Junior didn't wait for Rosriazola this time, and Oblak took one then. He got a, a strong hand on the ball. Well, it's Jovic, I think, trying to get on the end of it, which he's entitled to. It was a great ball in, and it's a 50-50. The goalkeeper, Oblak, is very, very brave. I think Luka Jovic has just stuck his foot out, trying to get a contact on it, and he, he does catch him. It looks accidental to me. But it must have hurt. Might have hurt both of them. Yep. 
Anyway, he's got that's what they paid the money for, Jerry. 60 million to Eintracht Frankfurt to bring him in. He had a fabulous goal scoring run last season in the Bundesliga. He's a poacher, he needs better service, and he's had, that's the first service he's really had in the opening 25 minutes. And the keeper has got a knock, and Jovic looks like he's coming out of it worst of the two. As you said, this ain't no friendly. No, no, listen, never played a friendly in my life, I tell you. And that man doesn't play friendlies either. Could you imagine a 5 at 5 with him in the gym? And this man here, 19 red cards in La Liga, 24 in his career history in all competitions for uh, Sergio Ramos. But on the bright side, he's got 20 goals for Spain. Oh, oh it's his knee, the left knee, you can see. Hoblak catches him with all the weight of his body on the left knee. Well, we know all about left knees with Marco Asensio, they can't do without another one of those sort of injuries. Absolutely right. So Morata, front man, off for Atletico. He won't be coming back, replaced by Correa. Real Madrid will hope that Jovic will be able to continue. But right. the, in the bigger picture, Jerry, to this point in the International Champions Cup series this season, there has really been no spark from Eden Hazard nor from Jovic. No, nope, they haven't settled in. Eden Hazard's going to take time to settle down. He's got to learn Spanish. He's got to learn the strengths of his teammate. And that'll take weeks, which I expected. But what about the defence? What about, you know, Nacho? What about Sergio Ramos and Marcelo? And they're not playing well at all. That was quite agricultural from Ramos, wasn't it? I think that's his way of sort of saying, I'm going to stop the rot now. It's a bit late, they're 3-0 down here. Yeah, and he does, he goes for the superstar, doesn't he? Straight to the inside of his right leg. An amazing rise for João Felix. He wasn't even considered to be a first-team starter at the beginning of last season for Benfica. But under the new regime of Bruno Lage. Lage, of course, promoted from within. He knew what the kid was capable yeah. of. And once he put him in the first team, he simply exploded. He ended the season by playing for Portugal. Yeah, I like what I've seen last year. And uh, Silva as well. I love watching Silva. You know, another one with explosive pace over the first three or four yards. And scored a lot of goals now. Is this going to be a strike with goal? Yes, it is. Not a very good one, in all honesty, from Lamar. But we know he's capable. Incidentally, uh, the left back Renan Lodi is moving okay, and so too here again is Correa. Jerry forecast he would be lively, and he was correct. Diego Costa wants it played in his direction. The first to everything. Saul had a pop from distance. That's the key for me. They are first to everything, and the goals when it, you see the goals, Paul, and you, you see that run as well from Ankel Correa when he made the run there and he was onside. He's coming from a deep position, nobody picks him up. Look at that pass, it's awful. Sauer won it back and here we go again and it's four. And this is actually becoming embarrassing for Real Madrid. Well, it's easy for Sal because if you anticipate and you want to get to the ball before the opposition and they're in second gear, they're going to have chance after chance and they can score at will. 4-0, this is going to be a huge defeat. Diego Costa, written off too soon, perhaps. He's got two here against Real Madrid. It's all about anticipation, and when Sal wins it and gives it to him, Diego Costa's not going to miss. Thank you very much. There, the pass from Sergio Ramos is awful. Look at Modric on his back foot. Sal anticipates it, wins the ball, slots it in. They are committing suicide. They really are awful. Wasn't anywhere near his best in 2018-19, but he looks renewed here, I must say. Well, Toma, 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 take that, take that, take that. And uh, he is loving it, scoring two against the arch-rivals here in the United States. And it'll give him loads of confidence, and he's enjoying himself. 28 minutes gone, 4-0 Atletico Madrid. Yes, Paul, I did say 4-0 Atletico Madrid, and it could have been six. So at one fell swoop, Diego Costa has levelled his tally for the entire La Liga campaign yep. last year, and he yep. got two in the league. Yep. Well, we know what confidence can do, and goals certainly, as a striker, goals help you. How, how bad were his injury problems, though, Jerry, last season? 
because he missed so many games, didn't he? He did, but only he knows how badly injured he was. You know, I, I mean, it's, there's certain players don't have a high pain threshold, and I've played probably 90% of the games I played, I had some sort of a knock. So you either want to play, you don't want to play, but when your confidence is low and you're not scoring goals, maybe you didn't want to play for that reason. And here's Karim Benzema on the park after 29 minutes. I'm afraid it has been as bad a start to his Real Madrid career as Luka Jovic could ever have envisaged. And straight away onto the head of Benzema. Yeah, it's more like a cushioned header, wasn't it, rather than a powerful header. It's back pass for Oblak. So Jovic, who was sacrificed for the sending off of Nacho against Arsenal, lasted, what, about 15 minutes in that game, nothing yeah. to blame him about that. He was very unlucky, but unlucky in a different way, more worryingly tonight, off with an injury. Yeah. Well, it was his left knee, as I made the point, and they haven't had a good time with left knees, as I said, Marcus said you. Hopefully it's nothing serious, and there's a yellow card, and that's the edge we were talking about. And it's well, that man, I, don't, I can't believe Isco has made a tackle. Well, it's a silly challenge, because the first touch from Correa is there, he's got the ball, and he doesn't go anywhere near the ball. He's going, he's right in front of the referee, he leaves him no choice but to book him. That was made out of frustration more than anything. I'll tell you another great thing about this tournament, the International Champions Cup, Jerry. I go back a year or two ago to Bayern Munich, and Bayern Munich came to play in this tournament, and there was quite clearly something wrong, something was amiss. And everybody, it was nearly five, thanks to Ramos there, everybody at the time said, oh, no, it's only the warm-up games, it's Bayern Munich, they'll get better. Ancelotti had gone by the second week of September. Yeah. Well, once the rot's in, there's nothing to do, and that's panic from the most experienced player at the back for them, Sergio Ramos. He obviously heard the shout from Courtois, and it was a keeper's ball, but he, he kicked it over the crossbar. He couldn't take a risk. Lamar. It's a good one. Sharp stop from Courtois, completely unchallenged. Was it Savic who went for it? Yeah, and this is awful. He has nobody picking him up, marking him. It's a free header. Have a look at this. Where's his marker going? It looks like it's Tony Kroos, who should be close to him, but they're not picking him up. Free header, he comes in from the edge of the box and hammers the header, and it's Hermosa. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. How many chances? And he's made two or three good saves. Oh, oh. A great win back by Lamar. This is the Lamar they thought they bought from Monaco, who was a bit slow to really get to top level last season. Well, he's here now, and you can see he's up for it. Good challenge. And this is a, a left-sided winger, a left-sided midfield player who's looking to compete. But everybody who plays for Atletico Madrid has to compete. I said that to you, Paul. Simeone's teams do not lack a competitive edge. They all have a go. Audrey Thola. Youngsters like Otrio Sola are finding out right now what it means to wear that famous jersey, arguably the most famous in club world football. And Real Madrid just do not countenance losing 4-0 at any time, and certainly not to Atletico Madrid. But that's the state of play here with us 33 minutes on the clock in the MetLife Stadium. Vinicius Junior. Do you think if they brought Gareth Bale on now and he scored four or five, he, he might go to China? <laughs> Don't laugh, Jerry, because it's a quite a good chance it could happen. The, certainly the first part. We, we were having the same conversation a couple of nights ago we were. at this stage of the Arsenal game, and they did need Bale then. Yeah, and he came and he delivered. Vinicius Junior. Stopped by Lodi. Well, a little bit of hesitancy. He had a chance to play the ball in to Odria Thola and it didn't happen, he didn't get the pass off quickly enough, and then he was forced to try and put it in himself, and he lost it. Marcelo, Benzema offered himself. Marcelo went again, just a little toe poke by Savic. Benzema trying to barrel his way through, stopped by Saul. No 
Lockjaw. Steered it away from João Felix. Here's Modric. Jerry, are there still suggestions, doubters, that say Modric might not be there for the start of the La Liga season? I, 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 do you know what? I don't know anymore at Real Madrid because of the way it's gone. And uh, I think they're obviously thinking, can we get Pogba in here? Are they going to have the money from? They're going to have to sell. Obviously, Bale's going to make way for... And they, they bring passion to that. There's a push in the Benzema. back. Push in the back. It was Modric's cross that found Karim Benzema. Yeah, I think you'll see the little nudge in the back of Trippier. He just pushes him there and wins the ball. But even then, when he cushions it down, the shot from Vinicius is poor. I can't see him scoring many goals, Vinicius. I see him going past players and maybe being creative. But I don't see many goals from Isco. He's a five, six, seven goals a season man. And... Uh, Benzema had his best return last season, 21 goals. And I just don't think it's enough. I don't really see enough there. Rodrigo Zola got to it here, Diego Costa. Here goes Vinicius Junior again. Eden Hazard sticking wide left. And it's behind both him and Marcelo. Isco now. This is Azar. Nicely into the feet of Vinicius Junior. That's as good as it got for Real Madrid. And Sal Niguez comes away with it. Sal Niguez is such a good player. And he closed the door very quickly on that little one too. And they don't seem to find as if they haven't got the key to open the lock. From a long way out, Vinicius Junior. And it's what, maybe two yards wide of Oblak's right-hand post. Well, it was a shot from long range from Vinicius Jr. and it wasn't a target, but it's it's a little bit better. But um, you have to get better, don't you, when you're 4-0 down in the first half hour? The great and the good of Real Madrid from the president to the club ambassadors all watching on in this marvellous stadium. It's a real platform for the greatest name in European football historically to put on a big show here in the United States. And they will be squirming in their seats right now. Yeah, the majority of the fans have come here to see the Real, Real Madrid, but they haven't seen the Real, Real Madrid. They've seen a pretender of a Real Madrid. It's not really turned up yet. Here we go. The new look Atletico are brisk, business like, confident, and very fit for a team that's only played one game before tonight. And here's Kieran Trippier arriving in the box. It's a great ball by Trippier, wow. and it should again be five. Oh, fabulous ball, Kieran Trippier. I tell you, that was different class. Lamar would be disappointed he hasn't put that one away. Super ball in, he whips it in. Oh, it's a great delivery. He's got to just cushion that one with his left foot in the back of the net. It's got to be in the goal. And so disappointed with the finish. All the Real Madrid players are wrong side once again. Jerry, you watch La Liga week in, week out. You yeah. cannot seriously tell us that they hope to be contenders for the title with Ramos and Nacho as centre backs. No, uh, Rafael Varane should be in there. He's a world class centre ha half who is a French World Cup winner. He's got to be in. And I think Carvajal's going to end up getting in instead of. Oh, oh, oh. That's a bit more like it, and Oblak gets a lucky bounce back off the post. Vinicius Junior hit the post, but he couldn't squeeze it into the net, which is what Real Madrid really need right now. Yeah, that's the best moment of the first half for Real Madrid. And, you know, Vinicius Junior in the, in the penalty area, he's closed down, it goes through the legs of Savage and in off the inside of the post. Back into the hands of Oblak. A little bit of good fortune for them there. And Jerry, not dissimilar to the position from which Correa got his first goal at the other end. Yeah, the well. same turn and just he almost did. a feel for the far post. He didn't need the assist of a post to get the ball in the back of the net. He planted straight in the far corner. João Felix finding room. And that's the position where he did the most damage for Benfica last season in that withdrawn frontman role. Yes. We were just debating he's, before he's, we started where he would be playing. He's hard to pick up when you're playing in that position. It's hard. Does a midfield player pick him up? Does a defender pick him up? 
and he's always getting touches on the ball and finding where can a ghost in to a position behind the back four and cause him a problem. Here's Sal Niguez. It looks almost as though Trippier has told him, by the way, this is my job to get forward. Yeah. You go and play somewhere else. Exactly. <laughs> I'll have that. And they're keeping possession, passing it much better. There's a good run from Lamar. This is where a lot of the trouble started tonight with Lamar and Lodi down the left. Diego Costa. Poké couldn't collect it. Isco has it briefly. And he won the free kick. Well done. The two players closed him down as soon as he won the ball, and that's the difference. They're hungry. They're eager. They're anticipating better than Real Madrid. They started off much better than Real Madrid, and they have a better shape. They're better organised. Really, Real Madrid are not looking good at this moment in time. But Sonal will tell you he's got, well, the, the, the league doesn't kick off until the 16th of August, so he's got nearly three weeks to sort it all out. Oh, good ball, Odriozola. Odriozola's pullback wasn't bad. Isco was arriving. Savic stood his ground. Lamar. Oblak had the best seat in the house, of course, for the first 15 minutes, but he's been a little bit more busy recently, Atletico's goalkeeper. This is not a misprint, incidentally, if you've been out on Friday night coming back, maybe you had one or two refreshers and you're looking there and thinking, am I seeing double? No, it really is 4-0 to Atletico Madrid. Well, Audrey Athola, a little bit industrial with the star Ma, Charles Felix. That may be one of the questions in the season ahead for João Felix, Jerry, because I think it's fair to say he will get more robust treatment more often in La Liga yeah. than he was getting last season in Portugal. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you come with a reputation, players will try and do anything they can to prevent you being that class player that you were in your own country. Maybe under a lot more pressure. Still very young and developing, has great potential. Cross got up to Coque and he's given it to Vinicius Junior. Good recovery by Coque. Tony Cross had a, a, an extra touch then. Picked up by Modric. He's found Marcelo. Again, he took a long time to hit it. Eden Azar. He doesn't want to switch onto his right the way he would have at Chelsea and hit that. And that's what I thought he should have done. Come inside on the right and hammered it. Well, you know. Two two half shot chances on the edge of the box, and there's always an Atletico Madrid player in front of them to block it. I think Correa was in the end of one of them. We all know he's too good for it not to happen, but I just wonder whether Eden Hazard at this moment is beginning to think, what have I got myself into? Well, he has to give himself a chance to settle down with his new teammates, I say. One of the things I've said to a lot of players after I came to Spain back in 1983, I've had lots of questions, like Michael Robinson and people like that who have come over before, the Steve McManamans and the David Beckhams. Um, you've got to learn the language, you've got to find out about the culture and the football, and that takes time. So don't be impatient, give yourself a chance. That's what I'll tell Eden Hazard. It's early days yet. Hasn't worked out for everybody moving to Real Madrid. Who would you say, Gary, are the more forgiving crowd to play in front of? Atletico vis a vis Real Madrid, if you're an incoming player. Well, the, the pressure on an Atletico Madrid team is obviously not as great because of what they've achieved. They've, they've won now 10 titles over the history of Spanish La Liga. That's a great ball he's in. Lodi again to João Felix, who's shaping up so, so very well. João Felix! A new name to so many over here. Not for much longer. Diego Costa went over. It might be a penalty. It is, it is a penalty. There's a little bit of a shimmy from Diego Costa when he receives the ball inside the box. This is brilliant skill from João Felix. He lays it off here, and there is the pass from Lamar now. One touch, 
Well, it's a silly challenge from Isco. Who's on a yellow card, oh, remember? I he's... wonder whether there's another yellow to come. That's a penalty kick all day long. He's got to be kidding me. Good save from Courtois. He's had a busy, busy first half. I was going to say, Jerry, not the first good save from Courtois by any means. Jao Felix looking magnificent, but it is going to be Diego Costa with the chance of a first-half hat-trick against Real Madrid here in the MetLife Stadium. Even if Courtois keeps it out, it won't make it respectable. Costa down the middle, beats Courtois, and Real Madrid would rather be anywhere else right now. It's Real Madrid nil, Atletico Madrid five, and honestly, hardly anyone can believe this. Well, I would say they've created at least nine or ten chances, and he's clever, he's... Don't follow the eyes, Courtois goes to his right, he hammers it straight down the middle, he moves his body up slightly, but Diego Costa, first half hat-trick, who would have thought it? Will be wholesale changes. I think they change everybody at the half time mark by one or two in their opener. Follow that, boys. Whoever's coming on in the second period. <laughs> Absolutely. You would not want to be coming onto the Real Madrid side when you're 5 0 down at half time. Goodness gracious me. And there are a lot of young players there. I know Carvajal's not young. He can come on at half time. But I think there's going to be several, several changes. Thirty-three times La Liga champions, peerless, the 13-time European champions, and in this International Champions Cup meeting here in New York, Real Madrid have looked a pale imitation of their club's great history. It has been all Atletico Madrid, Diego Costa has got a hat-trick, and Atletico are in dreamland here. They've been all over Real Madrid right from the off, and they lead 5-0 shades perhaps of the humiliation by Barcelona last October when they were beaten 5-1 the humiliation by Ajax in the second leg of the Champions League for Real Madrid more recently this has been troubling indeed Atletico get the ball moving in the second half here in the MetLife Stadium and Real Madrid need five in 45 minutes to emerge with any credit. Oh, great switch of play here, oh, well covered. First piece of action from Carvajal and the first piece of action from Lucas. Karim Benzema on in the first half. If you weren't able to be with us for the unfortunate Luka Jovic, who has been injured here. And this tour in the United States, I'm afraid he has been a miss rather than a hit so far. So Courtois off, Andrea Sola off, and also Vinicius Junior. And it's a bit more purposeful down that right from Real. From Carvajal, Keylor Navas takes over in goal. Courtois has probably gone for a lie down. 
Well, he's made three or four brilliant saves. He couldn't do anything for the five goals, and he made three or four very good saves, so I don't blame him for anything there. But Carvajal, I knew he was going to come on for all the throw that. Just beyond Benzema, Luka Modric. Very comfortable for Oblak. Mr. Odd job, isn't he, Lucas Vasquez? He's in down the right here, Jerry. Play virtually anywhere. Yeah, he's got pace, and uh, they're hoping he can get one on one situation, but they're very aware of him as that one's knocked over the top for Diego Costa. Shows good pace. He's loving it here tonight, looking completely rejuvenated after his injury problems. Well, a fit Diego Costa is welcome in any team, isn't he? And that one on the inside left channel Carvajal, Danny Carvajal had to get after him and gives away the corner kick <laughs> well he says it hit him in the chest He's on a yellow card as well, Isco. He's got to be careful. And he gave the penalty away. That was his challenge on Diego Costa for the fifth goal, which is the penalty kick. Do you know what, Jerry? I think a lot of the Atletico players did him a favour, actually, that they didn't press the referee for another card, as we do. I'm not condoning when players do it, incidentally. They're not meant to do it anymore. But on other occasions, many yeah. times we have seen players rush to the referee and say, well, get your card out for that. Yeah, it's a very He'd good point. He'd have gone off for that. Very good point. I think that happened in the Arsenal game when uh, exactly. he was sent off, Nacho was sent off. That's exactly what happened. Player flattened in the uh, line of sight of the referee that time. Well, it was Lucas Vasquez who was hammered. Or, sorry, Carvajal. Danny Carvajal. And you can see well, he's pushed over by Hermoso. What an introduction for Hermoso against Real Madrid. <laughs> he must be loving it as an Axis Spaniel player. Played really well for Spain last season as well. International debut. Here's Benzema. Eden Hazard. Taken off Luka Modric. The energetic Correa comes away with it. The great news for Atletico Madrid supporters is all the new boys seem to be betting in very, very well. That's what you want as a manager. You pick players and you tell them their, their position and tell them what their job is, and they've done it so well. I can't say the same about Real Madrid, unfortunately. A couple of late challenges come in there, referee not happy. Lamar. Well, he's caught late. It's Lodi, actually, who's caught late. He does dive well, doesn't he, that young left-back from Brazil? Lodi, yes. Um, I, I noticed that in the first half, and I, I'm not sure there was that much contact there from Luka Modric, but he did throw himself a bit theatrically for my liking. Eight points between Atletico and Real Madrid in La Liga at the end of last season. Atletico second with 76, Real Madrid a distant third with 68, and oh. likely to go six behind in this game. They are six behind. He just cannot stop scoring tonight. Diego Costa has done it again. Oh, four goals. He has found his form. He is on cloud nine. Honestly, every time he gets the ball, he looks like he's going to score. This is the Diego Costa we saw at Chelsea three and four years ago, terrorising centre-backs and so confident in front of goal. Yeah, he's class. He is a class act. He's a class finisher, especially in this form. And he times his run perfectly through the legs of the defender and he dinks it over the advancing Kaylor Navas. 
But well, what about the defence again? He's got a touch, and it's through the legs of Nacho. Another oh. great thing about this for Atletico Madrid, the assist by João Felix, as he was doing at Benfica last season, Jerry, and you spotted it earlier tonight for our viewers. He just sits off the defender, finds a metre of space and plays a teammate in, he's, as he did there. He's hard to pick up, Paul, because he doesn't play as a striker and he doesn't play as a midfield player. He plays in between, and that old-fashioned number 10 position and he picks it up he gets half a yard and he found the perfect pass and that's I think a second or third assist of the of the night so he's got himself a goal and he's had two or three assists as well what a start it all bodes very well for Atletico Madrid at this stage I think Real Madrid supporters will be watching through the through their hands and through the fingertips. He can't take any more of this. Well, Hazard wins the free kick there. But he'd nowhere to go. They just crowd them out. They put two, three players in front of you. You have no space, nowhere to go. Carvajal. Roddy is the defender. Easy one for Homo Saw. Steered it toward Lamar, actually, quite cleverly. And Carvajal had to be watchful. Lamar just pulled up a little short then. Here's Marcelo. Just eludes Isco, who made a forward move at least. Here's Correa to make a forward move for Atletico. He's stopped by Ramos. Marcelo weaves away forward. Eden Hazard. Found Marcelo. Marcelo goes for the spectacular. Well, it has to be spectacular because he's surrounded by red and white striped shirts and it's first touch, he flicks it up and he's got to go for the overhead kick. He's got Savage, he's got Hermosa, he's got everybody in front of him. But two players straight away to close the hazard down. So they have stopped him performing and that's what they do in, in La Liga. They'll put two players on you to stop you getting the ball and stop you becoming a threat and that's excellent play. Madrid, new faces all around this team, but that little passage of play there, that's what they've been about throughout the Diego Simeone era, Jerry. They just shut every door in your face, leaving nowhere to go. Just look at the shape, 4-4-2. Four, four, you can see the shape of them there, and they close. Look, there's two players, always two players in the wide position to come and close down. And if you can go past one of them, the second one will nick the ball on you. And here they go again. Carvajal, that's a clever ball. Better from Real Madrid, Lucas Vasquez from the edge of the box. Well, they're trying to find some way back, but there is no way back, Paul. They just got to see a face. Sorry, Jerry, there's another young defender in the old Atletico tradition. That was Godin of years gone by, wasn't it? Put your body in harm's way, and it was Hermosa this time. Let's see how they defend the corner. It was Hermosa again. It looks as though, Jerry, you'd know much better than us, but here's Marcelo. Still alive here, briefly. Sergio Ramos going for the spectacular overhead kick. It looks as though Atletico have done their shopping on the basis of, well, we know one veteran is now leaving, so we'll go and find a player who plays exactly like a Godin or a Felipe Luis. Well, that's Simeone's mentality, and he has a very strong mentality. Real Madrid are more entitled to go and pick up stars, somebody who's a great footballer and try and fit them into what they've got. And that's not working. I'm looking at the shape. I don't see a shape with Real Madrid at this moment in time. I see a lot of individuals on the park who don't really complement each other. And that's sad to say, but that's the situation. And Zinedine Zidane's got his work cut out. Simeone is preparing it, appears, to make a series of changes. That might actually rub even more salt in, uh, in Real Madrid's wounds at the moment. He thinks this game is done and dusted with good reason. I thought it was done and dusted when they were 3 and 4 nil up, but it is definitely over now at 6 nil. Jao Felix. He was away again there, wasn't he? 
Well, referee thought he maybe took a little bit of a dive, but he knocked at one side of Tony Cross, went round the other side. Modric. Vasquez. Got out easily by Correa, and Diego Costa's on his way. Carvajal. That's the way too much then of Lucas Vasquez. Here's Hermoso again. Were all the top clubs in for Hermoso, Jerry? Uh, there was a few clubs in. He's had a meteoric rise last season with Espanyol playing central defence. And uh, he's good on the ball. And his international career obviously helped him as well. But he's a great fit for Atletico Madrid. He's just what they need. They score. Modric is given offside. Must have been pretty tight, that one. Joe Felix is still complaining that he didn't get a free kick going forward a moment ago for Atletico. I, I kind of agree with him. I thought he knocked it on one side of Tony Kroos, went around the other side, and Tony Kroos leaned into him and prevented him running around the other side. But when you're 6 0 up, it doesn't really matter. Almost an hour gone, and he's got a lot of problems to sort out Zinedine Zidane. Mitigation at this moment, we're not seeing Edar Militao after his involvement with Brazil at the Copa America. Fernand Mendy is on the bench, although we think he's got a bit of a, a strain just at the moment. Yep, there's two. Well, Militao, they'll be crying for him to come in and play. Nacho's had a very... But I, I've, I've always liked Nacho. The last two, three seasons, he's been a utility man. And he can play anywhere across the back four, and he usually doesn't let you down, but he hasn't played well so far. Hazard again crowded, he scored, got away from one, went over on the edge of the box, Benzema, never the silkiest in possession, Benzema, that's a bit of a liberty taken by uh, João Felix, Modric won it back, Benzema goes for it. Well, he got up but he couldn't hit the target with it, does he give a corner kick, does it come off someone else? I thought when the ball went to Luka Modric in the edge of the box, he should have shot, but he put it wide right to Lucas, and Lucas puts in this ball, and let's have a look. Does it hit the head of... Yes, it does. It hits the head of Savic. Edin Hazard. That's a bit more like it from Hazard, and they get one back Real Madrid. The last touch might have been by Nacho. I don't think he knew too much about it. It hit him rather than him putting the ball in the net. And it was good play from Eden Hazard. That's a really positive attacking role he's shown there on the left-hand side, Paul, and he needed it, and Real Madrid needed it. That was a moment, a glimpse of the real Eden Hazard in a Real Madrid jersey. Here it is, and he gets away from Correa. Shows great determination, and there's a touch at the near post, and it hits the left heel of Nacho. I don't know if he knows too much about it, but it hits him on the left heel, and he's happy to claim that goal. Didn't know an awful lot about it, did he? Well, Black was thinking only about a clean sheet against Real Madrid, so that's gone by the wayside. I would say, seeing the last two, three seasons, Nacho has been one of their most consistent performers. And to see him playing in the last two or three games the way he's played is a bit disappointing for me, and he must be disappointed himself. But I know he'll come back, he will bounce back. He's played left back, right back, centre half, and he's got Real Madrid tattooed right through him. Hazard not giving up on it, and credits to him for that. Koki bringing it to the referee's attention, the challenge. Two young centre-backs, well, obviously, Rafael Varane is still a youngster. Now, Gareth Bale's going to come on here as part of a wholesale regrouping by Zidane. This is the same 
Gareth Bale, who we were told all through today will definitely not be involved this time. He's definitely about to sign for a club in China. Well, he's coming on the park, which is great to see. And De La Fuente is coming on, and Kubo is coming on. I'm looking forward to seeing Kubo. Teenager from Japan, who's an outstanding talent. Well, there's a Kubo, hold on. Rodrigo's also Rodrigo. coming on, Jerry. Yep. Eden Hazard was just coming to life then. I think he looks a bit disappointed that he's not got the chance to make more of an impact, but taken off with an hour under his belt. Well, Sedan will tell you, I've got three more weeks to get ready for the start of La Liga. That's the most important thing. That's and fair I, enough, and I agree it? with him. I agree with him. Here's Rodrigo, signed from Santos of Brazil for 45 million. He's a delightful footballer to watch, is the youngster from Japan. The question is whether he's robust enough to stand up to Atletico Madrid. Benzema is robust enough, but he's knocked off it by Saul. Oh, 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 oh. Bound to get feisty. Challenge. It always does here, and people need to put their arms down. Diego Costa's in the middle of it, and he's lost the plot as he tends to do all too often. Carvajal actually took the first hit, and he didn't like it much. Well, that's what I was talking about, and it's Lucas. I think and Lucas is not happy. He's not happy with the challenge, I think, from Diego Costa. Who would be a referee in these situations? And Coque, I think, and Danny Carvajal are trying to sort it out, too. Spanish internationals who know each other very well. Linesmen chatting to the referee. But as you reminded everybody at the start, Jerry, you know, the intensity of the rivalry never goes away. Yeah. And, oh, that's a bad challenge now. It's night. a foul on the It mark. is, but he kicks him. And now watch the challenge coming back from Diego Costa. And that's why Carvajal reacts straight away. And he's standing up for the player who was kicked, and everybody gets involved. And we mean everybody. Yep. Diego Costa's been brought over by Simeone, and Carvajal should be the other one. Yep. Surely there's no need for anything other than a yellow, just to calm a couple of people down. Yeah, but he's got oh, red. We're going to go with red. I, I said it because I sensed it could happen, Jerry. Is that really appropriate? I don't think so. I think yellow card would have been enough, but the referee wants to be very strict on this occasion. He's gone for it. That's one of the reasons I mentioned at the start about the disciplinary record of, of uh, Sergio Ramos, who's got 24 red cards in his career at, at, uh, in Spanish football and has the highest record of any other player. But two so players sent off. Diego Costa, who was in the thick of it, it must be said, and we think, we think it's Carvajal, we we'll yeah, like to confirm that. It is, it's definitely Danny Carvajal. Carvajal and Costa are the two sent off. He didn't play long the second half, Carvajal, did he? No, he didn't, and it's a bit like Nacho in the previous outing for Real Madrid. Yeah. There he is, Danny Carvajal. Hopefully the blood will cool. Well, he was the one I talked to you about three or four years ago, went off on on a sabbatical to Bayer, Lever or Bayer Leverkusen and then he was bought back by Real Madrid and his career took off after that and uh, became a normal right back for Real Madrid and became a number one choice for Spain he's had a good career so far in, in fairness to the referee perhaps we should also balance it by saying you know, there are so many young people watching this and there is an image issue attached to a, a fixture like this, and maybe you're just saying, look, we, we want a spectacle, we don't want it to be a fight. Yep. Well, it, it spilled over a little bit, and it was probably handbags at two paces in the end, but 
referee didn't like what happened after the two players got involved. There was 12, 14, 20 people on the pitch. And that's why I think he felt he had to produce the red cards to show authority and tell players you can't get away with that. In La Liga, they probably would have got away with the yellow card each, I think, in La Liga. But not here out in the United States in this International Cup competition, which has been really, really enthralling. And 6-1 lead for Atletico Madrid, and I, I think there'll be more goals. I'll tell you why Diego Costa will feel a bit insulted by a red card, because for all the stuff down the years about how fiery he is <laughs> and, and how dangerous a man he can be to confront... Gareth Bale trying to invent something which Real Madrid so badly need at the moment. Benzema was alive to it, but nobody else was. Wow. For all the stuff about Diego Costa being a loose cannon, etc., in his whole professional career, he's only ever had two red cards. Now, that's fairly impressive when you consider that nearly every season he's been in double figures for yellows. He's not the same league as Sergio Ramos, is he? Oh, no. <laughs> Nobody is. No, but I, I take your point, but he's one of those that would niggle away at you, and he'll he'll put himself apart, but that's his job, that's part of his job. He gets more people sent off than he gets sent off himself. He, he's an antagonizer. he antagonises everybody. The crowd looks <laughs> certainly animated now. A roar of defiance from the Real Madrid massive here in New York. Well, it's the first time I've seen it. Looks like Llorente there on the ball, who's the ex-Real Madrid player who's come in as anchor on the midfield. It's good to see him back in the in the pitch. He's come on for Koke. I know you rate him very highly, and it was a big transfer fee, yeah, 40 million. I don't think they should let him go, but if they wanted the money, obviously, but you're right there with a cap. I think he's another one. Like when they let Morata go, I thought they should have sold Benzema and Cap Morata. Here's another of the new faces, the redoubtable Mexican, Hector Herrera. Oh, another good player. Great career at Porto. Yeah, mid, a box-to-box -box player who can run all day and puts himself about. Mexicans have got a great work ethic, as you know. But Hector Herrera is another one who... He came on a free transfer as well. It's crazy. He signed a five-year date, but he came on a free transfer. And he's going to be a good acquisition. Another, He's got a good squad, I have to say. Simeone's squad looks much, much better than Real Madrid's. So Herrera has arrived at Atletico along with Felipe, the Brazilian centre-back from Porto. They paid a fee for him. And again, that looks a very sound, well-thought-out transfer for a player who just gives you everything every week. This is a fabulous run forward, and it's an even better finish to make it 7-1 wow. for Atletico Madrid. There's no end to this. Navas got nowhere near it. Another special goal tonight from Atletico Madrid. Well, it's, it's Vitolo who's a sub, who's only been on, what, three or four minutes, and he's a class player, he's a left-sided midfield player, but he's come all the way, he's run a good 15, 20 yards, come inside on his right foot, buried in the bottom corner. Dare I say, Jerry, one of the forgotten men. Yeah. Well, sometimes they're forgotten, like Diego Costa. They remember him now, don't they? But look at this run, really strong, penetrating run, past one, keeps going. Then he's going to come inside here, and he shows good body strength coming in on his right foot, and that's a great finish. That's one of the best goals of the night for me. A little glimpse of his undoubted talent. He was a star at Sevilla. Atletico paid a lot of money for him, but so far he's not fired at all well, at Atletico. Uh, yeah, Maybe now. He has tonight. That's a class goal. Absolutely top, individually top class goal. Well done, Vitolo. It's a bit, from uh, from Atletico's point of view, it's a little bit like the signing of Kalinic a, a year ago. Simeone went out on a limb and tried to get a, a, a performance level out of Kalinic when basically other people had given up on him. Well, he's Here onside, onside. Flag stayed down. 
Navas palms it, but it's still alive. Bitolo onto the bits and pieces, and it's around the post and out where it can do no harm, but the harm has been done already again here. Oh, superb Wave play. after wave. I think it's Carmelo, this young lad on the right-hand side who's gone running through, come on his left foot, had a shot, keepers made the save, and Bitolo was nearly going to get a second goal. But great entertainment, end-to-end -end stuff. Yes, he's come on for Kieran Trippier, Carlos Munoz, Obero, Lucas Vasquez. Rodrigo's cross wasn't a bad one, and Gareth Bale was in there. Gives us a smile at least. Well, could this be the last game he plays for Real Madrid? He's trying to get in, he gets a header. Doesn't head it downward, though. He should have done better for me. Sanabria should have done better in terms of stopping him, jumping at the far post. But he got up and couldn't hit the target. Zidane apparently unmoved, despite the events the other night against Arsenal when Bale was scintillating for a period. The decisions made is what he told us. And all the stories today suggesting it's a matter of hours before Bale does sign a contract to go to play in China. Well, this will definitely be his last outing for Real Madrid, that is. Would have been nice to sign off with a goal, wouldn't it? Still a bit of time for that. Signs at the moment that it's still Atletico, not only hungry for goals, but able to create them. Despite all their changes. Llorente to Carlos Munoz. Educate me, should we be calling Carlos Munoz or by his shorter name? Munoz is the, the pronunciation, but the, uh, some of them have their Carlos on the, on the shirt and they'll have a nickname. That was his ball forward. And again, they move it well. Now, Salabria was in. Got a great squad of players here, hasn't he? Does oh. look like it tonight, Jerry. Yeah. They they all look as if they all understand the job. They have a responsibility, whatever position they're playing in. You can see the shape of them there. They're all the shape's good. And that's very important from a coach's point of view. Sense that Real Madrid just wish this was over, but there's more punishment to come. Unbelievable. <laughs> gets away with one. He, kn he knew nothing about it. It should have been it. It really should have been it. I don't know whether this is actually becoming more embarrassing now than the first half because Atletico Madrid have put on the kids and the kids look absolutely full of confidence that they can go and score at will for Atletico. Well, they're all fit and they're all keen and that's that should, it should have been a goal. You know, I've seen uh, Carmelo there who should have scored. I saw the fabulous play down the right-hand side from Carlos as well and he had the shot and, it was, uh, and the cross. But it's one-way traffic still. It's exactly the same as the first half. This Real Madrid team has been run ragged. So effectively, Jerry, at this moment, the scoreline is Real Madrid 1, Atletico Madrid reserves 7. <laughs> yeah. And it should be 8 or 9. It should be more than that. I think they had 14 shots in the first half and scored 5 goals. And they must have had at least 6 or 7 shots in the second half. Those are the, some of the first team names now not needed tonight. Yeah. Thanks very much, boys. And the big guns are all out, but they've got quality on the bench. Collected by Rodrigo and given to Lucas Vasquez. Oh, it's good play. Who 
Silva conceded the free kick on Herrera. Two players at opposite ends of their careers in some respects. Herrera's had a wonderful few years at Porto. Mainstay for Mexico until very recently, but Kubo, one for the future, certainly. Yeah, well, Herrera's 28 now. He'll still think, that's why he signed a five-year deal. He'll think, I've got three or four really good years left in me, and I wouldn't doubt that if he keeps himself fit. And uh, he is a box-to-box -box player, yes, and he will absolutely. give you everything. He is the original roadrunner. He'll be fit, all right. Beep, beep. <laughs> question is whether he fits in regularly for Atletico. That's an Atletico free kick. Uh, he's going to get the free kick is right. There's going to be a book on his referee. He's going to have a quiet chat. Calm it down. Llorente. He'll be loving this, Llorente, won't he? Well, I think he's gone to a better club at the moment. Just about cut out by Javi Hernandez. A couple of questions further, Jerry. Yes, tapping into your inside knowledge. Jesus Vallejo, young centre back from. Uh, Real Madrid has been told he can make a move to Wolverhampton Wanderers in England. Yeah, he's one of the ones they've developed over the last couple of years, and he's now told, well, we don't need you after all. What's your view about that? Well, he doesn't fit in with the Senanin Sedan's plans, and if they don't fit in, he lets them go. Mariano is a striker, and he can go as well, and I think he's a good finisher. I, I like what I, like I see about Mariano, but I said that about Mar Morata when they let him go. And the manager of uh, Nuno Espirito Santo, who is the manager of Wolverhampton Wanderers, a Spanish guy who knows his football very, very well, inside and out. He'll know what he's getting with uh, Vallejo. And also, this time last year in this International Champions Cup, Real Madrid showed us a whole group of young players that look so full of talent, and they've had no chance to make themselves a part of the picture long term. Is the philosophy flawed in that way, in your opinion? Well, it's not totally flawed, but what I say is, as a manager, when you're looking at teams, you start at the back and you have your spine with a goalkeeper, the centre half, centre midfield, centre forward, and they have to be solid, they have to be players that you can rely on. The back four's got to be very solid. The back four for Real Madrid in every game I've watched has looked awful, and they've brought in a lot of new faces, and it hasn't fit, it hasn't worked out. Mendy's playing a little bit of football, and it's supposed to be him or Marcelo's going to start the season off. There's not an awful lot between the two of them at the moment, but you know Mendy has to find out how good his teammates are and find out all about them, as does everybody else. Uh, you know, we talked about um, Eden Hazard. He's got to learn the language. Gareth Bale. Bale. One of the reasons suggested for the way the romance faded for Bale at Real Madrid is its alleged reluctance to really participate, become a, an expert speaker. All this stuff comes out, of course, when things go wrong. If he's winning games by himself, it's never mentioned. Well, I see his performances when they win Champions League and when he pulled them out, you know, and they, were, they needed him. And he's won an awful lot of titles and, and he's won a lot of competitions as a Real Madrid player. So. It can't have all been bad, whether he speaks fluent Spanish or not. Yeah, sure. I think his Spanish is OK, but it could, obviously it could have been better for the length of time he's been there. That's what their complaint is, but maybe that's just people making an argument because, you know, they don't want him there. Yeah, I think so too. But the problem remains, Jerry. have the lessons been learned from the last few years when they're being shown up so badly here? Oh, my goodness. Everything went right. Paul, honestly, it should have been another goal. This could be another big moment in the season ahead. If they're going to get a level of performance out of Vitolo, and he's beginning to look like the player we saw at Sevilla. He is, and he's played the ball in there, he's gone for the return pass, and he's thinking it over the top of uh, Keylor Navas, but he puts it over the crossbar, unfortunately. Should have been another goal, it was a wonderful piece of play. Going back to Real Madrid's plight right now, Jerry. you know... So many, even of their own supporters, have said over the last five, six, seven years, every time we win the Champions League, it papers over the cracks because the le they've won the Le La Liga twice in 
over a decade now, and that's just nowhere near their expectation level. Absolutely spot on. I couldn't agree anymore because I think that's exactly right. I think they're a good cup team, and uh, there's some of the games that they've won in the in the Champions League. I still can't believe they actually won them. Well, uh, absolutely right. I think back to the semi-final against Bayern Munich yeah. what, three seasons ago now. How they ever got through that? Well, one of the things they did that day was Zidane played Lucas as a right back, if you remember, and I was commentating on the game, Paul, and I thought, there's no way this is going to work out, and he was run ragged, and they should have conceded three or four goals in the first half, and they got away with it, and then they made the changes at half-time and put Lucas in front, but listen, they have rolled their luck on lots of occasions, and they'll point to the Champions Leagues they've won and say, nobody's won anywhere near as many Champions League, we're in double figures, nobody else is. And they can say the same about league titles, 33 league titles to their name, and Barcelona 26, Atletico Madrid's won 10. In recent times, it's Simeone and Atletico Madrid's hearts that have been broken more than any other club by Real Madrid in the Champions League, of course. Yep. But raising yourself for one or two games a season is not the same as being a dominant force. No, totally, it's your league title as a bread and butter, that's the proof for me and the pudding. And Messi and Co are the team that everybody has to beat next season. Uh, and, and Anton Griezmann being there is going to be another plus for them. Here's a good run. Is there to be a swan song for Gareth Bale? He'd like it. That's class. He has that acceleration. Looks like he hardly broke sweat as he hit third and fourth gear on the outside. Into the tight angle and puts it across the face of goal. But that's vintage uh, Gareth Bale and Carlos. You've always said his biggest problem has been his injury yep. problem. Yep. If he wasn't so injury prone, he would have played a lot more games for Real Madrid and they would have won a lot more because he is a world-class player. But play to his strengths. If you've got a player who's got quality, play to his strengths. I don't think Real Madrid always do that. These hungry young Atletico Madrid oh, players are not this. letting Real rest even now. Camelo was in the box, he didn't come for him. Maybe should have come in a little bit more quickly. Oh, we were talking about Herrera earlier. Paul, that was his run, who went past two challenges, and he has a fabulous engine. Do you believe that Atletico now think that they are ready to challenge Barcelona for the title? Well, they did challenge Barcelona last season, but you have to do it the whole way through the season, not for, like, two-thirds or three-quarters of the season. That's the difference. They have to have a, a squad that's strong enough that can compete. And I think they have a strong squad now. Even though they've lost Griezmann, they have got a lot of quality players in there, and Xavi Phoenix has been top drawer. He's going to score goals, he's going to create goals for them. Thinking back even slightly further, Jerry, to, to echo your point, you know, the team season before... Penalty for Real Madrid. And a fig leaf to cover some of their wounded pride, perhaps. Nacho won it, he was a bit too clever. <laughs> Well, do you know what? He, he's a utility player. I told you, you can play anywhere in the back four. He's got into that position, and he's gone outside Herrera, and he's won the penalty kick. And it's Benzema who's going to take it. He can't wait to take it, Benzema. Oblak's looking thoroughly fed up with life, isn't he? He's conceded one, and now he might concede again. <laughs> he does concede again. Well... This game's finishing 2-2, the second half. They lost the first half 5-0, but he'll say we, we drew 2-2. Uh, That's a good run. That's uh, clumsy challenge, I have to say. Herrera, he gets across him, and I can see why the referee's given the penalty. But well done to Nacho. That's some penalty, isn't it? Position that perfectly just inside the post he was Real Madrid's top goal scorer last season with 21 goals second best tally in his entire career it's 
He's got a really good uh, Champions League goal scoring record as well. Not too many are better than him. Wins it ahead of Llorente, Benzema. is in at centre-back and that means that Nacho could go and play as a left-back. An opportunity to get forward for him and that's how the penalty came about. Now, oh, this is looking interesting. Rodrigo had a drive into the box. Sanabria. Sanabria actually born in the United States, but he is playing internationally for Uruguay. He's of Uruguayan parentage. Yes. Well, acknowledgement there from Nacho about the challenge. Picked him up, dusted him down, and now they're going to get on with it with a couple of minutes left in this game. Are we going to get more goals? It's been a nine goal thriller so far. Thriller or horror story, depending on your category, depending on which team you're from. I think it's both, really. It is a horror story if you're a Real Madrid fan. Here's Gareth Bale. I just don't think that this late flourish can in any way disguise the problems facing Zidane, Jerry. No, no, that, they're very evident, and I said that in the, in the last two games, I have to say, against Bayern Munich and certainly against Arsenal. Well played by Bale. In by Vasquez. Put away by Felipe. Good campaigner for Porto and another good pick up by Simeone. Hasn't he done well? He's a really good man in the transfer market. Wow. A black sharp stop. It's still alive for Real Madrid. Vasquez, deflection on the cross, all along the goal line and turned in. It's another one for Real Madrid. Wow, that's fantastic stuff. I have to say, the shot from uh, Kubo from the edge of the box was fantastic. That was unbelievable. And the player credited with the goal to make things look slightly better, De La Fuente. Yeah, Gareth Bale on the end of it, heading it downwards, and then in it goes from De La Fuente. Does it cross the line? It? Oh, it does I'm not sure, actually, and I'm credit sure. to the player who actually followed in thereafter. Well, De La Fuente gets the header there and hits the post. I'm not sure that crosses the line. I don't it does think it. you did, Jerry, on reflection. Yeah. So then it's followed the follow-up. No, it doesn't cross the line. Well, they're giving it to De La Fuente. I don't think it crossed the line. Needs another look, doesn't it? Yeah. What about the strike from Kubo from the edge of the box? Oh, I really do like this. Very, very talented Left player. Left-footed player, he's class. He but will he be given pressing. the opportunity? Well, they're talking about playing him in the reserves, but that's what they did with Vinicius as well. So I would think at some stage he's got to play in the first team. I would play him in the first team, definitely. Or a late cavalcade of goals, which to a degree masks what has happened here this evening to Real Madrid. And right on 90 minutes, the referee calls it off. Nobody's going to be fooled by what we saw in the last 10 minutes here when Real Madrid did get the ball in the net on a couple of occasions. For the preceding 85 minutes or more, they have been given a lesson, a very painful lesson, by their great local rivals. Hernandez now credited with that third goal for Real Madrid, but look at the other column. Four from Diego Costa, Correa, João Felix and Vitolo also on target.
the only downbeat note for Atletico here, the red card for Diego Costa after a bit of a schmozzle and a little glimpse tonight of this young man, João Felix, and the extraordinary potential he possesses, which makes Atletico very confident that they can live on and prosper without Antoine Griezmann and the likes of Kieran Trippier and the rest of the new boys also excelled in a first half where Atletico tore Real Madrid asunder from the first minute to the last. It was 5-0 at half-time and it could even have been worse than that. And with or without Gareth Bale, it's a mighty big job to set a mighty club back on an even keel. Real Madrid have got it all to do. So let's remind everybody how it all transpired here. Such great atmosphere and great excitement in the hours before kickoff. And the expectation that it would be hard fought and fairly even, Jerry. Well, it was hard fought, but it was all Atletico Madrid opening goal, deflected off Sergio Ramos, but the shot coming in from a man who we haven't heard a lot of, Diego Costa. How he loved it out there tonight. And Saul setting him on his way for the second. Lamar was outstanding while he was on the field. Hermoso's header clawed away by Courtois. Courtois was flying across that goal, back and forth to try to keep it even semi-competitive, but he couldn't keep out Costa's penalty for the hat-trick. Well, it was a fabulous first half for Atletico Madrid and Diego Costa in particular. João Felix, he scored one of the goals. The penalty made it five. And João Felix added again early in the second half with a superlative little assist into the path of Diego Costa, another promising element for the campaign ahead, the partnership there. Well, there wasn't much for Real Madrid to shout about, but this is one good moment from Eden Hazard. One of few, in fairness, and a little cameo, and that's what they need out of him, what he's produced through his career so far. Surely he will get up to that level again. But this has not been a great start for Eden Hazard, and an even worse one for Luka Jovic. Out of luck again tonight with an injury. The kids started to come on late on, but two of the old Warriors locked horns here. Costa and Carvajal, and they would both see red for this. Well... There's a lot of players trying to stop it happening, but it was always going to be a little bit fiery. This is the wonder goal from Fitolo. What a great goal from one end to the other. That's the best goal of the game for me. The forgotten man and the key now to start all over at Atletico. Little glimpse of what he was all about two or three years ago at Sevilla. That was class. That was top quality for me. Little late flurry by Real Madrid. And we think it was Hernandez who's credited with the goal. De La Fuente's goal-bound header rolled all along the line. Yeah, yeah and uh, it was Hernandez who put it over the line, for sure. So, Zidane with a little cheer from the performances late on of his younger players. But beyond that, so many questions over some of his biggest stars. Could be the last game from Gareth Bale as well, I think. All the talk here, Jerry, that that is the last we will see of Bale in that famous jersey. The deal is done. That's the reports we're receiving. And they're drifting out of the MetLife Stadium now. The many, many Real Madrid fans here, scarcely able to believe what they have seen. Hello, yeah. Uh... How important is for for the Atletico and and for you to uh, gain a victory against a rival like Real Madrid here in the in the states in the preseason? Uh, é bom, como se ganhar é bom, é sempre bom. Ganhar este rival é, é melhor ainda e tem outro sabor especial. It's always good winning is always good, and winning like this against a rival like Real Madrid is even more special. Do you think that this team that scored seven goals, it will be the, the team that the, the people can expect for the season? We are going to always work to do the best possible, to mark the most number of goals and try to suffer the most number of goals to be able to win, which is always our objective. 
we're always going to work hard throughout the season to score as many goals as possible and to concede the least amount of goals possible. So we're going to work hard and we're going to try to keep this up for the rest of the season. How confident will feel the team after this kind of victory? Claro que estamos mais confiantes, mas vamos trabalhar da, da mesma maneira que temos vindo a trabalhar até aqui, sempre com os pés bem assentos na terra. We're confident, but we still have to keep working hard to keep this up throughout the season. So we're going to keep working hard to keep our feet on the ground and stay motivated. So almost time for us to sign off here from the MetLife Stadium. João Felix speaking on behalf of his new teammates for Atletico Madrid, but they've done most of their talking out on the pitch tonight. Their statistics do not tell the full tale, far from it. A man apiece sent off in a game with the customary edge that any meeting of Real Madrid and Atletico produces. But it's one that Atletico will remember with great pleasure. So Real did edge out Arsenal on penalties after coming back from a two-goal deficit. No comeback tonight. Atletico won on penalties against Guadalajara in their opener and comprehensively winning against Real Madrid tonight. And a real mouth-watering game against Juventus still to come in the International Champions Cup. And also still ahead, Milan against Benfica, Manchester United against Milan, Tottenham Hotspur against Inter, ahead of that meeting between Atletico and Juventus. So this wonderful tournament still has more to offer, but this has been one of the marquee occasions, two of the most famous club names in world football, and it ended being very one-sided indeed. From Jerry Armstrong and myself, Paul Dempsey, thank you very much for watching, and we sign off, bid you good evening.